16 years to save a deposit. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to talk about just the struggles for first home buyers. The insane amount of time that you need to save a deposit. Sydney, 16 years. I think we'll look at the numbers exactly in a moment. But I follow a YouTuber, or not a YouTuber, a radio host who happens to have a YouTube channel, Dave Ramsey. I like his, uh, when people go into the debt-free scream, he's got a method that people use to get out of debt and get control of their finances. And one strategy he encourages people to take in the US is to get mortgages for only 15 years. 15 years. Here, we're taking 16 years to save a deposit completely normal and fine. Sydney's not for normal people anymore, guys. It it just isn't. So let's have a look. Let's start by looking at this article from Yahoo. So, first home buyers in Australia now need more than 10 years to save a 20% deposit on a new home. A new report says, underlying the worsening housing affordability crisis across the country, now 16 years is just for the Sydneyites. The rest of us get away with just 10 years. The latest ANZ CoreLogic housing affordability report estimates that based on households saving 50% of their gross annual income, it would take a record 10.8 years to save a deposit for a house and nine years for a unit. Now, there's the thing. You've got to save more than 15%, but it's tough saving more than 15%. When you've got living expenses, when you've got food, when you've got petrol going up, $2 a litre, everyone. Who remembers when it was 40 cents? Property prices jumped 21.6% over the 12 months to October 2021 as buyers and investors took advantage of record low interest rates to pile into the market. Over half the country's capital cities posted an annual growth rate in excess of 20%. We're talking property, not crypto. (laughs) That means first-home buyers are becoming a progressively smaller component of housing demand. The number of loans taken out by first-home buyers fell 27% between January and September 2021, as housing values increased at a much faster pace than household incomes, said Xenia and said economist Felicity Emmett. The national dwelling value-to-income ratio hit 7.7 times in the June quarter of 2021. Between the end of March 2020 and June 2021, Australian housing values increased 12.6%, while median household incomes are estimated to have declined 0.2%. Okay. Houses are up over 12%, and income or median income is down 0.2%. Median is smack bang, where half of us are above and half of us are below. Now, I I like to talk about the K-shaped economy. Do I have this chart here on my stack? I don't think I have. I've showed it too many times. But how there is a two-speed economy here in Australia, guys. And, well, this is one chart I like to show just to clearly demonstrate the class divide that's in our egalitarian society. Those with the highest income over 200 a week. Oh, sorry, 2,000 a week. In the middle, just under 1,000, and the lowest, 433. There's a great divide in people here in Australia, and home ownership is one of the markers of it. You're, there's, that's the reason why. I don't blame people wanting to get into homes. I don't blame people doing everything they can to get into it because renting is a pain in the ass. You've got to deal with landlords. You've got to deal with real estate agents. And socially, there's a stigma to being a renter. Okay? Don't, don't you give me any of that bullshit that there isn't. There is. There really is. Okay? If you don't own a house, there's a bit of a stigma there. It's part of part of what's happening. I don't say it, I don't think it's good, particularly since we're a nation of people that want to become landlords. But come on, guys, you got to be honest. Regional Australia has become less affordable amid the pandemic as more flexible working arrangements increase migration to the regions. The report found regional property values increased at a much higher rate than capital cities, jumping eighteen point one percent between March twenty twenty and June 21, compared to 11.2% for combined capitals. Renting in regional Australia is also the least affordable on record, with a proportion of income 
required to pay rent at a record high of 32.7% in June 2021. Now, let me bring up this definition. Housing stress is typically described as lower income households spending more than 30% of their gross income on housing costs. And here we're just seeing, well, 32.7%. So the lower incomes are going to be under housing stress. But also, think about it. You're paying 30% of your income in rent. You're trying to save 15% to get a deposit. How much of your money is going on housing or putting aside for housing in the future? So even if you finally get into a house with a deposit, and even if it's with the help of the bank of mum and dad, you may be better off. You may have more cash in your hand, even if interest rates go up 2 3%. Because you've been doing it so tough. This ain't the boomer times when you get in a house for 200 grand, guys. Oh, and don't forget, also, you know, <laughs> you've got superannuation uh, taken out of your pay every single, every single paycheck. It's locked away for the banks and unions to control. Isn't that awesome? We've got so much, so much intervention and control in our lives here in Australia. People think we're a free market. Isn't that funny? They think we're in a free market and a free society. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, by comparison, inner city apartments present some of the best opportunities for both tenants and buyers, the report said. Yeah, well, just... Have a look at the construction playlist I have on this channel. Uh, we've got mascot towers. You've got the sugar cube apartments. I bet you that doesn't seem like a great buying opportunity for the people who bought in sugar cube. What about Zetlands? Yeah, that was a buying opportunity. Yeah, here's the thing. Buying anything in the last 20 years for apartment construction, you've got to understand the market has been overheating and that leads to construction corner cutting. So opportunities you think the people in mascot think it was a great opportunity for them to get in there no it ruined a lot of lives anyway i know that's not what they're talking about but still melbourne is the most affordable city to rent relative to household income it found while darwin perth and brisbane are the most affordable cities to enter the housing market not surprising let's have a look at this this is from that report and we'll just jump to the top so you can see what it is. The Housing Affordability Report, June quarter, 2021, from ANZ. And what I want to do is I want to scroll down to show a few things, a few charts here that are interesting. Here's the proportion of income to pay rent. There you go. Houses, 30%. Units, 27.1%. Remember, this definition, 30%. Okay, 30% is the definition of house, household stress. Years taken to save a deposit, 11.7 for a house, 9 for a unit. But if we go further down, we can see particular regions, everyone. We'll have a look here. Proportion of household income required to service a new mortgage. That's, that's already at household stress. But see, this is all at median. Median people you know, won't be able to get into housing, everyone. Housing isn't for everyone anymore. That, that's, this is probably what we're seeing here. We're seeing the biggest cultural shift in Australia. It used to be you'd immigrate over here, you'd get a job, and you could buy a house cheap. You know, why, why do you think my father came over here from Germany? Better weather, opportunities. It was an exciting new country. Now we're like the old world, where housing is only for the established and the rich. Here you go. Let's have a look at Sydney. Median dwelling value in 2006 was four hundred and twenty four thousand dollars. God, 2006 is that what? Fifteen years ago. It's not that long. In June, it was nine hundred and ninety-four. And let's bring up SQM just to have a look at what it is right now. The asking price, at the very least. What are, what are we seeing? Three bed, one point five million. One point five million. Everyone. I'll leave up my little Sydney chart there. Household income went from twelve hundred to eighteen hundred. Years to save a deposit: sixteen point six years. Houses to income ratio: twelve point five. In is that household income? I'm assuming it's household income. In the seventies, Sydney was five point five. Proportion of household income required to service a new mortgage, 60.4%. Okay, so this is showing you 
that people on median income can't buy in Sydney. It's just it's not going to happen. Okay, so you need to look at other cities, other opportunities. Portion of household income required to pay rent, 34.2%. There you go, guys. And we'll go through this report here. Oh, let's, let's just look at re regional New South Wales. Move to the regions. You still have 11.7 years to save for your deposit. Proportion of household income required to service a new mortgage, 42.6%. To rent, rent is 36.8%. So even in the regions of New South Wales, we're seeing that for median incomes, housing stress is everywhere. So you've got to leave. Or what you really have to do is get above median income. You've got to find new ways to make money. You've got to get a better job. You've got to skill up. That's what you have to do. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be as... Here's the biggest thing, and let's, let's talk about this. You know, the takeaway from all of this, guys. And what we have here is a shift in Australia. We're no longer living in the Australia that previous generations did. It's changed. It's changed a lot. And, you know, there can be multiple arguments over why. But you're not going to have the same run that your parents did. It's not the same country. It's bigger, more developed, there are more people coming here, different political policies, different ideological positions in our leaders. So you're going to have to make sacrifices that previous generations didn't. You may not be able to live in the, the same lifestyle that previous generations did. You may not be able to live in the same area, the same house. You may need to compromise. You may need to do it a bit tougher. You may drop to a different level on social hierarchy you know it's changing guys that's just what happens maybe that's australia maturing as a country the solutions to this frankly are getting the government out of the bloody housing sector opening up the market allow I, you've got to understand there's so many cost burdens put on every single project every single house they need to make it easier for people to split develop land they need to get more stock on the market they need to reduce the headworks burdens on people splitting in councils. They need to allow densification. They need to get rid of the not in my backyard crowd because it's all, you know, well and true people bitching and moaning about house prices, particularly the Greens. And we've got an inner, inner city Greens councillor here in the suburbs with houses worth millions of dollars going and protesting a development in Ipswich for lower cost housing that just happens to be next to an old Aboriginal reserve or camp. That's why. You can't have it both ways. You can't bitch about housing costs and then have not in my backyard or ideologically opposing cheaper housing. You need to have progress. Hopefully, hopefully we'll start to turn a corner. It'd be great to see people protesting this insanity to the same extent that they're protesting uh, the lockdowns. You know, 16 years to save for a deposit. It's 15 years to save for a bloody, to pay a mortgage in the States. Welcome to Australia, guys. Thanks for watching. I want to encourage you to check out this last video I did just about housing affordability, just how crazy it's going. Take care, guys. Have a great day. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye for now. That's good, Stein. Keeps me going.